פרשת בלק, פרסט עלייה. בלק סנא ציפור saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. מואב was alarmed because the people were so numerous. מואב dreaded the Israelites. And מואב said to the elders of Midian, Now this horde will lick clean all that is about us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. Balak, the son of Tzipor, who was king of Moab at the time, sent messengers to Bilam, the son of Beor, in Pethor, which is by the Euphrates, in the land of his kinsfolk, to invite him, saying, There is a people that came out of Egypt. It hides the earth from view, and it is settled next to me. Come then, put a curse on this people for me, since they are too numerous for me. Perhaps I can thus defeat them and drive them out of the land, for I know that whomever you bless is blessed indeed, and whomever you curse is cursed. The elders of Moab and the elders of Midian, versed in divination, set out. They came to Bilam and gave him Balak's message. He said to them, Spend the night here, and I shall reply to you as Hashem may instruct me. So the Moabite dignitary stayed with Bilam. God came to Bilam and said, What do these men want of you? And Bilam said to God, Balak, the son of Tzipor, the king of Moab, sent me this message. Here is a people that came out from Egypt and hides the earth from view. Come now and curse them for me. Perhaps I can engage them in battle and drive them off. But God said to Bilam, Do not go with them. You must not curse that people, for they are blessed. Second Aliyah, Balaam arose in the morning and said to Balak's dignitary, Go back to your own country, for Hashem let me go with you. The Moabite dignitaries left, and they came to Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. Then Balak sent other dignitaries, more numerous and distinguished than the first. They came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak, son of Tzipor, Please do not refuse to come to me. I will reward you richly, and I will do anything you ask of me. Only come and damn this people for me. Balaam replied to Balak's officials, Though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not do anything, big or little, contrary to the command of my God, Hashem, so you too stay there overnight and let me find out what else Hashem may say to me. That night God came to Balaam and said to him, If the agents have come to invite you, you may go with them. But whatever I command you, thou shalt do. Third Aliyah. When he arose in the morning, Balaam saddled his ass and departed with the Moabite dignitaries. But God was incensed at his going, so a messenger of God took a position in his way as an adversary. He was riding on his she-ass with his two servants alongside. When the ass caught sight of the messenger of God standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand, the ass swerved from the road and went into the fields, and Balaam beat the ass to turn her back onto the road. The messenger of God then stationed himself in a lane between the vineyards with a fence on either side. The ass, seeing the messenger of God, pressed herself against the wall and squeezed Balaam's foot against the wall, so he beat her again. Once more, the messenger of God moved forward and stationed himself on a spot so narrow that there was no room to swerve right or left. When the ass now saw the messenger of God, she lay down under Balaam, and Balaam was furious and beat the ass with his stick. Then God opened his ass's mouth, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have beaten me these three times? Balaam said to the ass, You have made a mockery of me. If I had a sword with me, I'd kill you. The ass said to Balaam, Look. I am the ass that you have been riding all along until this day. Have I been in the habit of doing thus to you? And he answered, no. Then God uncovered Balaam's eyes, and he saw the messenger of God standing in the way, his drawn sword in his hand. Thereupon he bowed right down to the ground. 
the messenger of God said to him, why have you beaten your ass these three times? It is I who came out as an adversary for the errand is obnoxious to me. And when the ass saw me, she shied away because of me those three times. If she had not shied away from me, you are the one I should have killed while sparing her. Balaam said to the messenger of God, I erred because I did not know that you were standing in my way. If you still disapprove, I will turn back. But the messenger of God said to Balaam, go with the men, but you must say nothing except that I tell you what I tell you. So Balaam went on with Balak's dignitaries. When Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at Ir Moab, which is on the Arnon border at its furthest point. Balak said to Balaam, when I first sent to invite you, why didn't you come to me? Am I really unable to reward you? But Balaam said to Balak, and now that I have come to you, have I the power to speak freely? I can utter only the word that God puts in my mouth. Or Thaliah, Bilam went with Balak, and they came to Kiryat Huzot. Balak sacrificed oxen and sheep and had them served to Bilam and the dignitaries with him. In the morning, Balak took Bilam up to Bamot Baal. From there, he could see a portion of the people. Bilam said to Balak, build me seven altars here and have seven bulls and seven rams ready here for me. Balak did as Bilam directed, and Balak and Bilam offered up a bull and a ram on each altar. Then Bilam said to Balak, stay here beside your offerings while I am gone. Perhaps Hashem will grant me a manifestation, and whatever is revealed to me I will tell you. And he went off alone. God became manifest to Bilam, who stated, I have set up seven altars and offered up a bull and a ram on each altar. And Hashem put a word in Bilam's mouth and said, Return to Balak and speak thus. So he returned to him and found him standing beside his offerings and all the Moabite dignitaries with him. He took up his theme and said, From Aram has Balak brought me, Moab's king from the hills of the east. Come curse me, Jacob. Come tell Israel's doom. How can I damn who God has not damned? How to doom when Hashem has not doomed? As I see them from the mountain tops, gaze on them from the heights, there is a people that dwells apart, not reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Yaakov, number the dust of Israel? May I die the death of the upright, and may my fate be like theirs. Then Balak said to Bilam, What have you done to me? Here I brought you to damn my enemies, and instead you have blessed them. He replied, I can only repeat faithfully what Hashem puts in my mouth. Fifth Aliyah. Then Balak said to him, Come with me to another place from which you can see them. You will see only a portion of them. You will not see all of them and damn them for, for me from there. With that, he took him to Sedet Sofim on the summit of Pisgah. He built seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. And Balaam said to Balak, stay here beside your offerings while I seek a manifestation yonder. Hashem became manifest to Balaam and put a word in his mouth saying, return to Balak and speak thus. He went to him and found him standing beside his offerings and the Moabite dignitaries with him. Balak asked him, what did Hashem say? And he took up his theme and said, up, Balak, attend, give ear unto me, son of Tzipor. God is not human to be capricious or mortal to have a change of heart. Would God speak and not ask? promise and not fulfill. My message was to bless. When God blesses, I cannot reverse it. No harm is in sight for Jacob, no woe in view for Israel. Their God, Hashem, is with them, and their king acclaim in their midst. God who freed them from Egypt 
is for them like the horns of a wild ox. Lo, there is no augury in Jacob. No divining in Israel. Jacob is told at once, yea, Israel, what God has planned. Lo, a people that rises like a lioness, leaps up like a lion, rests not till it has feasted on prey and drunk with the blood of the slain. Therefore, Balak said to Balaam, don't curse them and don't bless them. In reply, Balaam said to Balak, but I told you, whatever Hashem says, I must do. Sixth Aliyah. Then Balak said to Balaam, come now, I will take you to another place. Perhaps God will deem it right that you damn them for me there. Balak took Balaam to the peak of Peor, which overlooks the wasteland. Balaam said to Balak, build me here seven altars and have seven bulls and seven rams ready for me here. Balak did as Balaam said. He offered up a bull and a ram on each altar. Now Balaam, seeing that it pleased God to bless Israel, did not, as on previous occasions, go in search of omens, but turned his face toward the wilderness. As Balaam looked up and saw Israel encamped tribe by tribe, the Spirit of God came upon him. Taking up his theme, he said, Word of Balaam, son of Beor, word of the man whose eye is true, word of one who hears God's speech, who beholds visions from the Almighty. Prostrate, but with eyes unveiled, how fair are your tents, O Jacob, your dwellings, O Israel, like palm groves that stretch out, like gardens beside a river, like aloes planted by God, like cedars beside the water. Their boughs drip with moisture, their roots have abundant water. Their ruler shall arise above a God, their sovereignty shall be exalted. God who freed them from Egypt, is for them like the horns of a wild ox. They shall devour enemy nations, crush their bones, and smash their arrows. They crouch, they lie down like a lion, like a lioness. Who dares rouse them? Blessed are they who blessed you. A curse they who curse you. Enraged at Balaam, Balak struck his hands together. I called you, Balak said to Balaam to damn my enemies, and instead you have blessed them these three times? Back with you at once to your own place. I was going to reward you richly, but God has denied you the reward. Balaam replied to Balak, but I even told the messengers you sent me, though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not of my own accord do anything good or bad contrary to God's command. What God says, that I must say. Seventh Aliyah. <clears throat> and now as I go back to my people, let me inform you of what this people will do to your people in the days to come. He took up his theme and said, Word of Balaam, son of Peor. Word of the man whose eye is true. Word of one who hears God's speech. Who obtains knowledge from the Most High and beholds visions from the Almighty. Prostrate, but with eyes unveiled, what I see for them is not yet. What I behold will not be soon. A star rises from Jacob. A scepter comes forth from Israel. It smashes the brow of Moab, the foundation of all children of Set. Edom becomes a possession. Yea, Seir, a possession of its enemies. But Israel is triumphant. A victor issues from Yaakov to wipe out what is left of Ir. He saw Amalek, and taking up his theme, he said, A leading nation is Amalek, but its fate is to perish forever. He saw the Kenites, and taking up his theme, he said, Though your abode be secure, and your nest be set among cliffs, yet shall Cain be consumed. When Ashur takes you captive, he took up his theme and said, Alas, who can survive except God has willed it? Ships come from the quarter of Kitim. They subject Ashur, subject Eber. They too shall perish forever. Then Bilam set out on his journey back home, and Balak also went his way. While Israel was staying at Shittim, the menfolk profaned themselves 
by whoring with the Moabite women who invited the menfolk to the sacrifices for their God. The menfolk partook of them and worshipped that God. And thus Israel attached itself to Baal Peor, and Hashem was incensed with Israel. Hashem said to Moses, Take all the ringleaders and have them publicly impaled before Hashem, so that Hashem's wrath may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to Israel's official, Each of you slay those of his men who attached themselves to Baal Peor. Just then a certain Israelite man came and brought a Midianite woman over to his companions. In the sight of Moses and of the whole Israelite community who were weeping at the entrance of the tent of meeting. When Pinhas, the son of Elazar, son of Aaron the priest, saw this, he left the assembly, and taking a spear in his hand, he followed the Israelite man into the chamber and stabbed both of them, the Israelite man and the woman, through the belly. Then the plague against the Israelites was checked, and those who died of the plague numbered 24,000.